I'm going to start with what is a strange question, but I was wondering if you could imagine for a moment sitting down and having a conversation with that <laughs> young woman. Uh, Ms. Gladstone, this is an absolute honor. Killers is a stone cold masterpiece and your performance is one of the best I have ever seen in my entire life. So seriously, thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to start with what is a strange question, but I was wondering if you could imagine for a moment sitting down and having a conversation with that <laughs> young woman, what you might say to her or maybe even what piece of advice you would give to the young woman voted most likely to win an Oscar. You know, I just kind of want to thank that young woman, you know, and thank her parents because they made this all possible. She had such a love for this and she had such a dedication to this. And I think like that's a lesson that a lot of parents like will take and, you know, talk about with their kids. It's like you, you have to care. You have to be dedicated. You have to give a lot to do this. And I'm just I'm glad that she knew what she liked to do young enough that um, kind of got me through college at least. <laughs> I love it that Josh Ryder is basically leading the Lily Gladstone <laughs> Oscar campaign. I think that is like one of my favorite stories to come out of this Oscar season. Oh, and he's the best. He is just one of the funnest, most dynamic, clever people. I mean, he can he can pitch an impersonation just perfectly, like any any which way. And I want to see more of him acting. He's a restaurateur now, a very successful, wonderful restaurant in uh, Queen Anne, Seattle, Betty Bar. Um, but yeah, I've, I've cast Josh before. I cast him to play Bing Crosby in a little biopic piece that I did several years ago, and he, was, he nailed it. So it's, it'll be his turn. Give, it a, give him a few years. It'll be his turn, too. I have no doubt. Um, I want to ask you about a moment that you are going to be asked about for the rest of your life, a moment that I'm sure you've talked about 30 times today. But could you take me to the moment that you received your Oscar nomination? Explain to someone who will never know what that's like, what that moment really feels like. Uh, and also the significance of that moment, being the first Native American actor nominated for Best Actress. It's not just a nomination. It's a, it says a lot for future generations. Absolutely. You know, it's it's a moment where they're kicking the door in and then hoping that everybody gets to run through it. And it was it was wonderful to share it with my parents as best as I could. You know, I, I got the news in Osage County in, in Pahuska, Oklahoma. I wanted to be as close to the Kyle sisters and to Osage Nation as I could should the news come that way. But I did FaceTime with my parents because they're the ones who have carried me like to this point. And, you know, I had to remind my mom that like, mom, I don't care. I don't, I don't need to see the screen. I don't need to see the announcement. I want to see your guy's reaction. <laughs> so then she's like, oh, okay. And then she flipped the camera around and kind of like made sure both her and dad were in the frame. And sure enough, like I knew, I knew that they were hearing my name when I saw their reaction. Oh my God! Does your phone immediately light up and say Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese? Like, is, it, is that a, is that a normal thing for you by this point? <laughs> you know, it it has become a normal thing. Leo is often one of the first, if not the first, to let me know when I've got a big like moment like this. He's the one who broke the news to me that I'd won. I think New York Film Critics. You know, it's he's uh, he's always watching and he's so encouraging. And it's like I wish I could share this moment with him. He did such a tremendous job and. You know, he deserves the accolades for it. Absolutely, and he definitely does. Um, speaking of Leo, I actually had the pleasure of sitting down in person with Mr. Scorsese um, a few months ago when, when the press tour was coming out. Obviously, you guys couldn't at the moment because of the strike. But I asked uh, Mr. Scorsese, of all the characters throughout his entire filmography, whose soul is he most worried about? Of all your characters, whose soul are you most worried about? Ah. Yeah, that's a good one. And he said Ernest, which I thought it was interesting when you think of Travis Bickle and the guys from Goodfellas right. and Casino. I'm sort of curious what your thoughts on that answer is. Like of all the Scorsese characters, should we most be worried about, about Ernest's soul? I think Ernest is maybe out of all of his characters, the one who carries that thin line of, of evil. You know, how evil is just wrapped up in complicity with other evil acts. And we are all so much walking that line. It's... um you know, in different ways. So I feel like Ernest does kind of carry that human condition and that duality, that trickster nature that we all kind of inherently have, whether we feed it or not. So, yeah, and I think like closing the film out the way that he did, you know, people will have their own opinions as they should about like what Molly's thoughts were about Ernest in that last moment. But I feel like it was really Marty's way of giving Ernest a way to absolve himself, and he doesn't. 
you know, and that's, I think that's also the worrisome thing. You're absolutely right. And I want to, talking about how Mr. Scorsese ends the film, I think one of the greatest things to come out of this movie is that so many people now know this story, which at the end of the film was pointed out that no one really did when Molly passed. It wasn't even mentioned in her obituary. What do you think Molly would have to say about how this has all turned out and the fact that now people do know that story? And is there anything you wish you could have asked her? I mean, plenty. You know, the one thing that I wish that people knew more about Molly was, even though it wasn't mentioned in the obituary and she would shut down when people brought Ernest up, she she wouldn't want to talk about it. She would just kind of like shoo it away. Um, but she was a very tenacious, strong woman, even after almost losing her life through this process, losing most of her family, losing a child. Like what, what worse can a woman go through than losing a child? Um, she, in the end, she took Ernest to court after he got out of prison and she got money back from him that he'd mismanaged when he was her guardian. She did the same with her guardian, Pitts Beatty. And before she passed away, she didn't pass away an incompetent Osage. She was in charge of her own finances. And, you know, she passed away at age 50 in 1936, you know, 10 years after the trials. So she wasn't on this earth for as long as she maybe should have been. But she... She loved her family so intensely. That's something that she was remembered for. It's on her headstone, what a loving mother she was, what a loving wife she was. And, um, you know, in the end, she, she couldn't get everything back, clearly, but she got back as much as she possibly could, and she didn't pass away a defeated, conquered woman, you know. She passed away with some real agency and real control over her life, as much as she could have. Absolutely. Well, I could woman. talk with you. Yeah, <laughs> rightfully, yeah, absolutely right. Um, I, what a great note to end on. They're giving me the wrap. I just thank want to thank you. you for such a beautiful, truly amazing performance. This is I've, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while now. This is our first <laughs> interview, and I hope it is the first of many. So it's truly, truly thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was lovely. It was a pleasure. Bye, guys. <laughs>